draw a little free body diagram. This is a little bit different free body diagram than what we had before because it's off of a stick. So it can't all come from one place, but what I can do is I can draw it like this. I still, as in a free body diagram like I did last time, I'll draw it with arrows. There's F3. There's the weight of the whole object, right? It's got to be held up somehow. I'm sorry, that's F1. There's F3. And there's F2. That'll just remind me what I'm working with. So first off, let's write what we know. I know that these torques are balanced. If they're balanced, that means they're in equilibrium. And the sum of all the torques is going to be zero. The, the torques on the left side, uh, let's see, the torques on the left side are going to want to move you this way, so they're going to be counterclockwise. The torques on the right side, they're going to move you this way, they'd be clockwise. So the first thing I know is that the counterclockwise, or excuse me, the clockwise torques are equal to the counterclockwise torques, right? I mean, they got to balance or else uh, it's going to tip. Now, what I can do is I know that torque is force times moment arm. So I can replace torque with force times moment arm. So on the clockwise side, well, let's see. First, I'll say on the clockwise side, I've got torque 1. On the counterclockwise side, oh, excuse me the clockwise side, that's clockwise. I've got torque 2 plus torque 3. On the counterclockwise side, I've got torque 1. Right? Counterclockwise side. These two torques balancing this torque on the clockwise side. On the counterclockwise side. I'll get it right eventually. Now, Torque is force times moment arm. So instead of torque 2, I'm going to say force 2 times moment arm 2. And instead of torque 3, I'm going to say force 3 times moment arm 3. And that's equal to torque 1, which is force 1 times moment arm 1. Now what I've done is I've taken this equation, this equivalence, there are it's an equilibrium, so these two sides are equal. I've taken them and I've written in terms of the variables that I've got. It's matching my shopping list now. Now the thing I don't know is F3, that third force. So what I need to do is I need to solve for that. Before I put in any numbers, I've got to get a, what's called a working equation, where what I have, everything I know is on the right-hand side, and what I don't know is all by itself on the left. So let's get to work on that. First off, I need to get rid of F2 and L2, so I'll subtract that from both sides. As long as I do the same thing to both sides, this equal sign will still be valid. So I'll say F3 times L3. See, I subtract F2, L2 from both sides. I get F1, L1 minus F2, L2. Good, okay. I'm almost there. Now, I don't have F3 by itself yet. I've still got this moment arm, L3, with it. So I'll divide both sides by L3. Now, I can't just divide one of these. I've got to divide everything on the right-hand side by L3. Now, they cancel on this side, right? L3 over L3. Now I'm going to take the time to write it again. This is my working equation. F3 is equal to is equal to F1 L1 minus F2 L2 over L3. That's my working equation. Everything I don't know, the one thing I don't know is on the left side. Everything I do know is on the right-hand side. Don't put any numbers in until you get this working equation. Don't do any algebra with numbers. Do the algebra with the variables. It makes it a lot easier to find what you did wrong. 
and I grade more on this working equation than any other part of the problem. Now, we can just plug in numbers. Right below that, I'll say equals. Now, F1, I go to my shopping list. Look at that. There's my variable F1. There's 100 pounds. I go to L1. That's 5 feet. Minus F2, which is 60 pounds, times L2, which is 3 feet. And all that is divided by L3, which is 2 feet. Now, I got feet and feet over here. Feet here, feet here, and they're subtracted. I could factor out these feet so they can both cancel with the feet below. And I'll wind up with pounds, which is great. That's what I'm looking for. So this would be, let's see, 500 minus uh, 180 would be 320 divided by 2. That's going to be 160 pounds. So what that tells me is to balance out F1, which is 100 feet, all the way out at 5, 100 pounds, all the way out at 5 feet, I've got this F2 on the other side, this counterclockwise torque, uh, which is uh, F2 is 60 pounds times the 3 feet, plus 160 pounds at 2 feet. If you want to check, you can figure out this torque right here. F1 times L1, 100 feet times 100 pounds times 5 feet, that torque is going to be 500 foot pounds. Here I've got 160 pounds at 2 feet, that's 320. Here I've got 60 pounds at 3 feet, that's 180, that's going to be 500 pounds. So 500 pounds, foot pounds, excuse me, foot pounds. 500 foot pounds on here is 500 foot pounds over there. They balance. That's how to do a torque problem.